Good morning, everybody. It's Rose popping in. It's Wednesday, and I've got my coffee. And truth, I didn't get a chance to go up and fill up my cup. But that's okay. I'll go up later. <laughs> um, I've already had one cup, so, you know, I should pace myself. Anyway, today's a good day. It's uh, sunny and, well, a little overcast, but I think it's going to burn off. I think it's going to be a nice day here. Um, hi, Delia. Thanks for joining me. So today I have another uh, fun project to share with you using the gift uh, wrapped stamp set and the matching gift wrapped uh, bow builder punch. So um, if you've been joining me all week, I did Monday I did a card and yesterday I did a punch art card using the punch. And today we're going to make a gift card holder. A lot of people give gift cards um, this time of year for Christmas. It's a great idea. A lot of people are online shopping gift cards, um, you know, if you can't get out and shop, it's a perfect option, right? So today I'm going to show you how to make a fun, easy gift card holder that you can use with any color combination, any designer series paper, cardstock that you have that matches. And I can't wait to share this one with you. So let's flip the camera and get started. Here we go. Okay, so let's put my coffee down and I'm just going to tilt my camera and we have a beautiful shaded spruce cardstock on my on my desk this morning I love this color it's a beautiful Christmas color and in the mini catalog they came out with the <clears throat> plaid tidings designer series paper oh my heavens you guys this paper is absolutely stunning it has I've shown it before but let me just flip through the plaid tidings is is good for all kinds of different occasions. Christmas, the pinks can be used for Valentine's Day. There's blues that can be used for masculine cards. Hi, Jim Jim, thanks for joining me. <laughs> I'm so happy you could join me today. Um, there are crumb cake colors. I'm just gonna flip through here. Uh, cherry cobbler and all kinds of really nice patterns for all different occasions. Black, basic black can be used for anything. There's a beautiful plaid there with some mossy meadow, um, some of our Cajun craze, and that um, pretty peacock, love, love, love that color. There's another couple of different patterns using pretty peacock, right? This one has a bit of the pumpkin pie coming through and crush curry. I think that Stampin' Up! has put every single color in this paper pad. <laughs> so today we're going to use this pattern right here because I'm making a Christmas gift card holder. So what I have for you is a, a sheet of shaded spruce and I'm going to bring in my paper cutter. I'm going to sh show you how you can get two of these out of a sheet. So we're going to take the paper and we're going to put it into, we're going to extend the arm. So when you extend the arm, of the paper cutter out like this you can get up to this paper cutter goes up to 17 inches so if you're a scrapbooker this is perfect the perfect paper cutter for you because I'm a 12 by 12 scrapbooker so I need the extra length right from the arm on this one if I'm going to cut down my 12 by 12 paper okay so what I want to do is take the, but I'm working with eight and a half by 11 for this card today so I'm going to take my piece of paper and with the eight and a half by or yeah the eight and a half at the top I'm going to line that up with the seven and three quarter inch mark just over here. Okay, so just going to trim off this little half inch strip. Now you can keep that or you can put it in your scrap bin or we're not going to use it for this card. But we're going to take our cardstock now and we're going to turn it and we're going to cut it at five inches. Okay, so we're going to have a piece and we're going to need two pieces. We're going to get two pieces. So let's keep on going and get a second five inch piece. Okay, so we've got, so what we've got, we've got, we've got two pieces that measure five inches by seven and three quarters, and we've got this one inch by seven and three quarter inch piece left. This is what we need for a gift card holder. Now, if you have extra of your shaded spruce laying around and you want to make a second one, you'll just need to grab yourself a one inch by seven and three quarter inch strip, okay? So that's that. Now you can use your paper trimmer to score and I, I actually like to use my Simply Scored board just because it's easier. Um, I'll show you why. So let's just put this away. Did you know that the arm of your paper trimmer um, has this little notch here? Let me hold my paper trimmer to the side. It has a little notch here so when you close it, 
it actually slides into this little track. I didn't realize that at first. Mine used to be sitting up or down. I'm like, why doesn't it go flat? It actually goes, it just got glides right into that little spot there. It should be nice and flat. Okay, so let's bring in the Simply Scored board. So this is the Simply Scored board. It has my increments here at the top. It's just so easy, it's quick and easy. I can grab my cardstock and be ready to go. I just put it into the corner like that. At the bottom here, I'm just gonna turn it so you can see the bottom. The bottom, it has a spot to hold my score tool. And I'm just gonna bring this in, hold it up at the corner, and we're gonna score this piece of cardstock on the long side. We're gonna score it at two and a half inches and six inches, okay? And then the skinny piece, the one inch piece by seven and three quarters, we're gonna put that on here as well. And we're gonna score that at six and one eighths, two and a half and six and one eighth. So two and a half and six and one eighth. So if you're wondering if you're, if you are fractionally challenged like me, <laughs> um, basically you get all these little increments here, you can just count them up if you need to know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight increments. So you just want to go to the first one. And one, two, three, four. So, okay, here we go. This, this little notch here. Okay. So that's the score for, this is going to be a belly band for our um, uh, gift card holder today. All right. So we're done scoring. We're done our cutting. And we're just going to put this off to the side. So let's bring this back. So we've got our piece for our, our gift card holder. We've got our little strip here. We need some of that designer series paper. So the designer series paper that I'm using is this pattern. And this piece measures two and a quarter inches by four and three quarters. And I have another piece that measures one and a half inches by four and three quarters. Okay. So we're going to stick that down onto our gift card holder. So I'm just going to grab my bone folder and I'm going to reinforce those score lines. So I'm just going to take it here and we're going to fold up and then this part at the top here, this flap is going to fold down like that. And we're going to add these designer series papers to the gift card holders. So I'm just going to flip this over and look at the pattern that's on the back side of this. It's like perfect Halloween paper, right? Love it. But we're not doing Halloween. We're doing a Christmas gift card holder. So we're going to use the opposite side. So this is going to sit up here at the top of my gift card holder like that. And then this piece will sit at the bottom on this rectangle pot spot. And we also need a piece of Whisper White. I didn't mention this in the beginning. That measures one and a half inches by four and three quarters. So let's just put this off to the side. I'm going to bring in my scrap Whisper White. And I'm going to trim a piece. So one and a half inches by four and three quarters. So four and three quarters is over here. And it only needs to be one and a half inches wide. All right, so got that. We also need some, scra some scrap paper. So I need some scrap Whisper White. I don't know if this piece will be big enough, but we'll try it. And we need a little piece of uh, shaded spruce scrap. Let me grab from my scrap bin, my scrap file, some shaded spruce. Okay, let's bring in some stamps. We need to do some stamping. So we're gonna stamp using the gift wrap stamp set. I love, love, love this new set. And I was telling you guys on Monday that it's not just Christmas, right? There's actually only one Christmas greeting in here. The rest can be used for any time of year. There's a Very Merry Christmas that I'm going to use today. There's Celebrate in Style, Tied with Love, especially Wrap for You. That can be used any time of year. So we're going to pull in our bow first. Okay, so I'm going to do mine using this bow down here. So they're photopolymer, so you just want to grab your image and... Grab the appropriate size block that'll fit on there. There we go. And I'm gonna grab my Memento ink. We're gonna stamp this bow using Memento on my scrap cardstock here. Will it fit? Yes, just right. Okay, there we go. We've got our bow on there. And I'm going to use my favorite coloring tool, my, my blends. 
I have shaded spruce in the dark uh, shade here. I do have the light shade, but I'm just going to use dark today. And I'm going to do a uh, quickly color the lines on this bow. Make it a Christmas bow. So I'm just going to do shaded spruce all the way around. I love that these um, lens markers have the fine tip that you can get into those skinny little lines. And I'm just taking my time here so I don't go outside the lines too much. You could also just stamp this onto cardstock using Versamark and you could emboss it with gold embossing powder or silver. That looks really nice. I'm just gonna color mine in here. So there we've got shaded spruce and I'm gonna bring in the cherry cobbler to do the inside. And I don't need the light one. I think I'm just gonna go with the dark. And I need to get a new one of these because mine is fuzzy, but that's okay. Often if you use your blends for coloring things that are that is not cardstock, and what I mean by that is like if you use your blends to color ribbon or rhinestones or uh, faceted, anything with bumps on it, <laughs> anything rough texture, it's going to do a number on the fuzzy tip. It'll make your tip fuzzy is what I'm trying to say. So this one that I'm using here ever so carefully is a fuzzy tip but you can tell I've got plenty of ink in this marker so I'm not going to throw it out just because it has a fuzzy tip because you know Christmas is coming and if I'm going to be making things I'm probably going to use this fuzzy tip to color rhinestones and stuff like that and ribbon so I will get myself a new one that I will use for coloring and what I do then is I often take a piece of um, washi tape and I wrap around the middle of this marker. And then I know anything with washi tape on it, I don't even have to bother opening it if I'm going to be coloring because it's it has a fuzzy tip. So the washi tape just tells me that that one is for coloring other things, not for coloring on your cardstock. Now, I do have my fine tip also, right, that I could have used, but it would have taken a lot longer to color using the fine tip. I'm just gonna cover in these little tiny white bits here with my fine tip. There we go. So I've got that one done. Hi, Nicole. I'm just popping up here to see who's joining me if you guys have any questions. So I'm gonna bring in my punch now and we're gonna just, just line this up. And this is the beauty of punches. You can line everything up perfectly and then when you're ready to go, just pop that out. So there we have the the colored bow and for my scrap I'm just going to do another bow just plain like that and we're going to put those together. So I like to curve curl the edges of my bow so I just take my bone folder and I come in from behind here and I'm just going to gently curl the bow like this. Just give it a little more more dimension make it look a bit more realistic right because when we make bows they're not flat they're going to be all fluffed up right so let's just curl the tips of my bow here and we're gonna put those together all right so straighten me straighten myself up here <laughs> okay so I've got my bow I don't need a ton of glue just a little bit you could just do a little bit in the middle and you could use a dimensional too if you wanted them to be you know popped away from each other I'm just gonna stick mine down like this and I just kind of want to have a little bit of that shaded spruce shadow showing in the background and make sure you do the right, the right side. <laughs> I did that wrong, but that's okay. Let's bring in that silicone mat. There is a right and wrong way. See, I want them to match, right? So let's do this right. I guess I could have just cut myself a new bow. I'm gonna do this the right way. So I want them to be matching. So the, the curve on this um, tail did not match. That's how I knew I had it flipped up upside down. Okay, so there we go. And my curving might be gone now, so I'm just gonna curl that again. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so there's our little bow. I'm just gonna set this aside. And that's gonna go on the front of my card when I'm finished. Gift card holder and slash card. So this is a dual purpose, right? You can, it's your card and it's also a gift card holder. So this is the basic um, uh, structure of the gift card holder. Now I'm gonna take the bottom piece here and I'm gonna bring in my one inch circle punch and I'm gonna just notch out a little bit in the middle here. Okay, so then we're just gonna add, 
You can do tear tape or you could use a little tiny bit of tumble glue. I don't want to put a lot because I, I don't want it to have to have to be like, you know, really sticky or whatever. I'm just going to put a gift card in here. I just want to close up those sides. So just let that dry for a second. And then we can go ahead and decorate the rest of our card. So this one inch strip, one and one and a half, sorry, one and a half inch strip. That's going to sit on the inside of my card right in here. So you can use this part to do to write your greeting. And then the gift card will sit in here. I don't know if I have a, I might have a gift card here. Yes, I do have a gift card. I'll just show you what it looks like here. There we go. So you can put your gift card in the bottom. Let's do some stamping on here. So I was looking at this stamp set. You can put anything in here, I, but I really like the Celebrate and Style. So let's stamp that one. This would work really well if you are giving someone a clothing store gift card, right? You could celebrate in style so then they can go get themselves something nice that they want or they can use their gift card online to do some online shopping. Okay, so let's ink this up with some Memento ink. Stamp that in the center like that and that's going to go up here but I think I want to make it a little more festive. I'm going to bring in the little, whoops, the little holly berry um, one. Let's grab that one. Just make it more festive. You can add all kinds of different stuff to bling up your card. You can add some rhinestones. I'm just going to stamp a couple of those on each side. I really like those. And then my same blends that I use to color the bow. I'm just going to use some cherry cobbler here. Just put a few little dots on to the holly berries. And then I'll use the shaded spruce to color in the leaves. There we go. And then that is gonna sit on the inside of that flap. So let's add some glue. And I'm taking my time, but this, this gift card holder can really, you can whip up a bunch of these in like no time flat. And you could also put some cash in there if you wanted to, depending on what you're giving. So it closes up like this, and there's my little gift card, gift certificate, whatever you wanna put in there. And then our little belly band, let's bring that in. So I can just use my thumbs to reinforce those score lines. So this is gonna go around the card. So this is how I like to do it. I just like to wrap it so that it's flat at the front. And then from the back, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of glue right on here, like that. And then I'm going to just lower this down and just gently hold it for a couple of seconds until it dries. And then this is gonna be my little belly band to keep my gift card holder closed. And then the bow is gonna sit right on the top, but I need a little greeting for the front. So I've got a strip of cardstock that measures three inches by three quarter inches. And from our stamp set, there's the greeting that has a very Merry Christmas. So let's stamp that on there. Let's grab another block and some more ink. There we go. I keep I keep putting the ink pad over there and taking the lid. Oh my heavens. <laughs> Maybe I did need that second coffee, you guys. Okay. <laughs> so let's ink this up. I'm going to stamp this and this is the beauty of photopolymer. You can see right through and you can stamp on a little skinny piece of cardstock. No problem. I want to just make this into a little banner. So I'm going to put this into my triple banner punch from the back here and I'm just gonna line that up right where that V is and make it like a banner. And that's gonna sit on the front of the card like this, okay? So let's put that on. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue right there and I'm gonna put this coming out the side like that and then the bow is gonna sit on top. So I'm gonna grab some dimensionals to put the bow on with. That's gonna sit right there in the center. 
And then we can go ahead and put this right on here. Just kind of make sure you've got it angled right so you can actually read the greeting. And there we go. We've got a little belly band that can slide off like that. So the person that's getting this can reuse it. If you didn't sign anything here, they could actually reuse this gift card holder. It's super easy. And um, take their gift card and they could put the belly band back on. And this is a nice belly band. It's not too, too tight. It'll slide right back on. And you could totally change this up. You could use glimmer paper, all kinds of different designer series paper. And keep in mind that the gift wrap uh, stamp set and the punch are not just for Christmas. This can be made into birthday and you could use this all year long. So I hope you enjoyed that little quick tutorial. And it's so easy, and I will post all the dimensions and the instructions over on my blog, over at rosecoleman.com. You see at the top of my screen here. And thanks so much, you guys. Thanks for all the love. It's going to flip you around here. Thanks for joining me again for a fun, easy gift card holder today. And I look forward to coming back tomorrow is Thursday. i got two more days of projects to share with you using this bundle. So um, I hope you'll come back and join me tomorrow with your coffee. I'm going to go get myself another coffee now and continue stamping. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.